Thank you for tuning into the Gift Up podcast on draft night. We're going to cap off these last few picks here. The Ravens selected Rashad Bateman at 27, and I'm leaning more towards not liking this pick. Bateman has good route running ability with some speed. I view him as more of a possession receiver to a certain degree, but it felt like the Ravens needed to go after a more physical style receiver if they were going to go after one at all. And when I watched the Iowa State game, Bateman physically got manhandled and was afraid to go over the middle of the field. Now, I know the Ravens have Mark Andrews, who's pretty physical. They have Hollywood Brown, who's a deep threat, and Sammy Watkins, who's going to be more of a periphery option for them. But it felt like they needed to get a big-time physical threat on the outside, and Bateman just doesn't fit that bill for me. The Saints were up next, and they selected Peyton Turner. And I'll be honest, he didn't make the cut on my list. I didn't see anything special from him on film that says you can make it in the pros. You do this, this, this extremely well. I think the Saints missed on this pick. The Packers are up next, and they selected Eric Stokes. And for me, this is just an okay pick. I'm not saying that Stokes is bad because I thought he was okay. But with Calvin Joseph still on the board, I think that's the direction you have to go in. And when I put on the film of Calvin Joseph against Alabama, he did everything well. They were moving him around. He was on Devonta Smith. You know, he was on the running backs in short coverage. He was doing everything. And I think that would have been the correct choice here. And like I said, Stokes is okay. He'll help the secondary. But I don't feel like the Packers got enough value here with this pick. The Bills were up next on the clock. And I was a little bit disappointed with the Gregory Russo pick. He did make my cut as far as, you know, getting to the NFL. I think he can make it. He does have the size. He's a decent pass rusher. But with Aziz Ojolari on the board, Ronnie Perkins, Joe Tryon, I think that was the direction the Bills needed to go in. I really don't feel like the Bills got the most value for their pick here. It's a decent pick, but I felt like they missed. They could have gotten something better. The Ravens are back on the clock again, and they drafted Jason Awa. This is another one of those picks that I just felt like was okay. Uh, I'm leaning more towards this being a miss because, like I just said, Joe Tryon, Aziz Ojolari, Ronnie Perkins, to me, those were more sure things than this. I don't feel like the Ravens got good value here either. And to cap off the draft, the Buccaneers drafted Joe Tryon. And as I just said, um, that would have been better value for these other teams that needed somebody on the edge. He's really physical and he does everything well from the defensive end position. He can blow up run plays. He can disrupt the offensive line. He can rush the passer. In a way, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Miles Garrett. So I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers hit with their pick to cap off the first round. Tomorrow is the second round of the draft, and what I'll be doing is more of this. I'll be compressing the picks every five or so and giving the picks that I really like. Because in the second and third round, there's going to be some names that just simply weren't on our radar, but I will highlight the ones that I like tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. With that, thank you guys for joining tonight. It was a good night. Thank you for listening. Hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe.